Good morning. Merry Christmas, East Storrington Congregational Church. Not, you know, the weather certainly uh, will, will stop a few of us from being here today, but uh, for those that are here, welcome. I hope you uh, it fills you, part of your, your Christmas walk with Christ during the Advent season to have a better understanding of what we're really celebrating um, and, and what's happening this weekend. So I really have very few announcements, although thank you to... Uh, yeah, Linda, she's downstairs actually putting a few things out for Coffee Fellowship because uh, we had nobody sign up. So I, I really encourage you, if you have partner with somebody, uh, to sign up for Coffee Fellowship would be a great help. But there is coffee downstairs. There are some snacks down there. And we just uh, encourage you to come down afterwards and just have fellowship together. But also, if you want in the future, uh, uh, join us for fellowship. The, other, the only other announcements that I have, unless there's somebody else out there and, uh, that has something going on, is Sunday, next Sunday, the church service, Christmas morning, will be at 9 a.m. And so I hope some of you can get out here and, and celebrate with us on Christmas morning. Uh, the choir will not be here, but we'll have different individual singers, and, and uh, we'll sing some... some the, she's laughing at me. I don't know why. Uh, we'll, we'll be singing some songs, Christmas songs and stuff on that day. But there will also be a message in other regular parts of the service. But on Christmas Eve, I uh, hope, again, I really hope you can join us. It's uh, lessons and carols. It's really the story retold. And I think it's important every year to hear that story once again as it was written. So the Christmas Eve service will be at 4 p.m. And the choir will be very active there. Natalie will be doing a couple solos for us. Um, and so it's just going to be a night filled with the word and music and each other, fellowship. <sighs> I love the snow, by the way. Um, it, it's absolutely gorgeous. Um, I don't like shoveling it or moving it, but uh, the, the beauty of the snow is real and, and what, what a gift um, just this Christmas season. So, Well, let us take a moment and just breathe in as I invite Allison to do our Advent uh, reading and Anna Rita to bring in the light of Christ. In the book of Isaiah, chapter 9, verses 6 and 7, the prophet proclaims, For to us a child is born, to us a son is given, and the government will be on his shoulders, and he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Of the greatness of his government and peace, there will be no end. Today we continue our journey toward Christmas, steadily moving closer to the birth of the Christ child, the source of our hope, our peace, and our inner joy, and the subject of our deep longings. In Christ we find a love beyond our understanding, yet it is here. The fourth candle is the candle of love. Our faith shines brightly. Maybe you can join me on this one. Our fourth candle is the candle of love. Our faith shines brightly in the midst of the darkness, the darkness of, our, of doubt. our doubt. Our faith, faith affirms that in the middle of our wandering, wandering our questioning, questioning God's, God's love, love for us is constant. God loved us enough to send his one and only son born to us, the savior of the world. God's initiative in seeking us out in love finds us, refines us, and makes our doubts and fears the fertile soil in which our faith grows. Jesus, Jesus your grace extends to us wherever, wherever we are today. today. Thank, Thank you. you. We trust in you, and in your love, our faith is secure. secure. Help us, God, to live in greater relationship with you and each other as we draw nearer to Christmas morning. Amen. So today, we light the candle of hope. A 
of peace. of joy. And of love. Please remain seated as we now sing this our song, O Come, O Come, Emmanuel. First and forth, first. First and forth. Scott and his boys all have the flu. So I got some ringers. <laughs> Church, they just learned the song this, this morning, so we'll see how that goes. This is the song we sang on the Christmas float, which was tons of fun. So sing along if you know it. Yeah. the star to a place unexpected would you believe after all we projected a child in a manger lowly and small the weakest of all unlikeliest hero wrapped in his mother's shawl just a child is this who we've waited for down from their thrones how many lords have abandoned their homes how many graves have become the least for me and how many gods have poured out their hearts to romance the world that has torn all apart how many fathers gave up And 
Good morning, everyone. I'm Carrie. I am one of the deacons at our church. If I could have Pastor Carl and Nancy come forward, please. Um, we are so very grateful as a church to have you as our pastor and Nancy as our wonderful wife of our pastor and friend and Aaron Choir. And there are no words to really express to you how much you all mean to us and how much that you do every single day from little things to huge things. So because we love you so much, the deacons of this church and everyone who has contributed would like to give this to you. You know, and, and I, I wasn't planning to say anything, but I, and I knew this was coming when Carrie said she had to say something, and it, it's always humbling, um, and, and it's overwhelming in many ways, and, and I'm reminded of so many people that have told me in their journey that they never felt worthy of being loved by God, uh, being forgiven, having that path of walk, and, and I understand that in this moment that, that I love what I do. And, and this is a gift that goes beyond the value of the money. It goes and penetrates to my heart. Um, and so thank you from, from everything I am, everything Nancy are. Uh, we, we, we both thank you for loving us so much. And, and that means the world to me. So now I invite Allison up here to uh, do the offertory. As we just saw, it is a season of giving, and it is a season of receiving. We prepare ourselves as we have the last four weeks for next week when our hearts will be opened once again to receive the love of Christ Amen. and his great sacrifice. So in that spirit, let us give back some of that love as we ask the ushers to come forward to collect today's offering. Father, we place these gifts before you and ask for your blessings. 
and ask that you multiply them and guide us as our distribution of these, these gifts that we bring back to you. So Father, we thank you so much for this season, for your son, and most of all, for your everlasting love for us all. It's in your son's name we pray all this. Amen. Amen. Words are on the screen. word of what needs to be corrected and that's what the word of God is for is to help us look inward to see what changes or or adjustments we need to make in our own life to be stewards of what the blessings that God has given us to be the light that the world needs so today's reading is going to be coming from the book of Matthew chapter 1 18 through 25. I think in your bulletin it says 26, but it's 18 through 25. And it's a familiar story uh, that many of you have heard, but I want you to hear it as if you're hearing it for the first time. Um, but before we do, we ask the Lord to open our hearts um, and our minds so we better understand these power of these words that we're going to hear. So let us first say the unison prayer together. Lord, come on the face. So the book, the reading does come from the book of Matthew, chapter 1, verses 18 through 25. And it's Joseph's, well, Matthew's version of the birth of our Lord and Savior. This is how the birth of Jesus the Messiah came about. His mother Mary was pledged to be married to Joseph. But before they came together, she was found to be pregnant through the Holy Spirit. Because Joseph, her husband, was faithful to the law and yet did not want to expose her to public disgrace, he had in mind to divorce her quietly. But after he had considered this, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream and said, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary home as your wife. Because what is conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. She will give birth to a son, and you are to give him the name Jesus, because he will save his people from their sins. All this took place to fulfill what the Lord had said through the prophet. The virgin will conceive and give birth to a son, and they will call him Emmanuel. When Joseph woke up, 
he did what the angel of the Lord had commanded him and took Mary home as his wife. But he did not consummate their marriage until she gave birth to a son, and he gave him the name Jesus. This ends our reading found in the book of Matthew. May the Lord bless it to our understanding. Amen. So this passage, um, well, Dan took some of the thunder out with the men's group yesterday and the couple days. We've been talking about, do you understand what's really about to happen? Do you understand what Jesus did for us? Do you understand the birth of this child? You know, this story, if you look at the, the story of, well, the, the person Joseph, how much do you know about Joseph? It really doesn't say much. 
You know, if, if he was in a movie, he'd be considered an extra or, or just a bystander. There, there's really, we don't know. We know up to when Jesus was 12-ish, but then after that, we have no idea what happened to Joseph. He's really not that important in the overall scheme of, of the story. And yet, you know, especially if you read in Luke, he, he just doesn't get any, Joseph doesn't get any love. You know, even, even, if, even at the temple, when Jesus, I, I remember you guys will know this story, but when Jesus stayed behind or the parents forgot him and left him behind, whatever way you want to look at it, and they go back to the temple and they find him, and, and it's Mary who scolds Jesus. You, your, your father and I were worried. Now, see, when I read that, they only put your father and I, I think, in that, that version. So Jesus' response would be, where do you expect me to be? I had to be in my father's house. I, I, I don't know if that's exactly how it happened, but I think that Joseph had to be there so we can understand who Jesus is. He's not the son of Joseph. He is the son of God. And so we have this story of Joseph in Matthew's gospel. And Matthew gives him a little bit more airtime. And, and so when, when you read this, it is really, for me, it's asking you, asking me in my life, do you live what you believe? What difference did Jesus make in your life? What difference does the baby make. And it's a lot of discernment. During the Advent season, it's that discernment that I think, hopefully, we've all been on this journey a little bit, is what does God have to do with this? What, what difference does Jesus make? So in the story of, of, of Matthew, it says, this is how the birth of the Jesus, the Messiah, came about. And it tells us his mother was pledged to marry to Joseph, but before they came together, she was found to be present, pregnant through the Holy Spirit. In other words, I believe Joseph and Mary probably had a nice conversation. You know, he, he probably noticed that little bump and thought, hmm, I know what happened. Now, I know in the story, because it tells us, that Mary told him that it was through the Holy Spirit. But Joseph didn't believe it. Because I know if something happened to me and it said that God did this, I would say, well, then I guess I better fall in line. But we don't hear this with Joseph, do we? We hear him actually saying, I'm a righteous, I'm a good man, I, I love the Lord. I'm just going to quietly divorce her. He could have had her stoned. Because he was a man of the law. But he wanted to quietly divorce her. So what made him loving this person? In, in that time period, love was different than what it is now, marriage. But what made Joseph not believe the story Mary was telling him? She's been gone. She, she, was, she was away. And so... Even though she was betrothed to, 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 to Joseph, Joseph knew in his head how someone got pregnant, right? Okay, most of us here today know how, and those on Facebook Live, know how someone gets pregnant, right? So Joseph's knowledge, despite what he's hearing, made him not be able to comprehend or understand what Mary was saying to him. He already knew what he knew, so therefore, it couldn't be possible. And so for in your own life, see, as I'm reading this, in my own life, how often has doubt crept into my life? How often has, have I thought that I already knew the answer, so when somebody else is talking, I kind of just blank them out? Anybody guilty of that sometimes? And then all of a sudden it bites you in the backside because you were totally wrong. See, the word of the Lord does that to me all the time. It doesn't make sense to me or I don't understand something. And yet, as life lives out in my life, it comes to fruition. It is the truth. 
And so you have Joseph in his doubt, and, and in the, the passage that Allison read today, that it is in his doubts that God works. It's in his not understanding that God makes something happen. And in the passage that Allison read this morning, I believe God's initiative in seeking us out in love finds us, refines us, and makes our doubts and fears into fertile soil in which our faith grows. See, I'm not much different than Joseph in the sense that I doubt sometimes. I have fears at times. I don't understand something, and then something happens that brings clarity into my life. And my faith gets stronger. Anybody been there that that you don't feel like you already know the answer uh, or your faith journey? You believe in God, but you can't put him into action because you really don't trust what he says. I can be forgiven. Or God can make new things happen. Or God can change your life if we only trust. See, Joseph wasn't quite there. But in his doubt, see, I love this next part because you have to, again, read the stories in Luke and everybody. But after he considered this, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream. Okay, now, I I think that's funny because if you look at the books, how did the angel come or or how did Mary find out she was going to be pregnant? An angel came right into her living room and said, hey, young lady, this is what's going to happen. But for Joseph, he gets it in a little dream. You know, how unfair. You know, if the angel came to him, it might make a difference. Oh, I'm, I'm, I'm in. But see, it was just a vision. It was a dream. And it says, in that dream, it said, do not be afraid. Have you ever heard God's word say that to you? Do not be afraid. Let me take over. Let me lead. You be the hands and feet, but I'll be the motive. And we walk into situations and we do things. See, this is where Joseph is right now. He, he's in this dream and, and he hears, Do not be afraid to take Mary home as your wife because she is conceived by the Holy Spirit. Now, I know in my walk, and, and, and I've been privy to other people that say they, they've heard God speak to them or something speak to them. But that's as far as it goes. That's as far as it goes. They, they get to that point of, I believe, and that's enough. But when God speaks, there's no action to it. We're just like dead. Joseph hears this. She will give birth to a son, and you are to give him the name Jesus. Now, see, we read this, but we don't always understand the power of what his vision was for him. See, the name Jesus is a powerful name. For Joseph, he was Hebrew. He was a Jew. Actually, yeah. So, so you need to understand, a couple hundred years before Jesus was born, the Hebrew language kind of faded out. They, they now spoke in Aramaic. You, you've always heard Jesus spoke in Aramaic, but he also could speak in Greek. But for Joseph, he most likely spoke in Aramaic, but he, under, he knew the Hebrew teachings through the scriptures. And so he hears in this vision, you are going to give him the name Jesus. Do we know what the name Jesus means? Anybody? What? Okay, yes, Yeshua. Yeshua is in the Hebrew. So, so you're taking it from the Greek name Jesus into the Hebrew name Yeshua. Right on. So what does Yeshua mean? The what? The Lord saves or salvation. It, it, the actual thing goes down to salvation. We often will say the Lord saves in, in our English understanding. But the word is salvation. So Joseph, a studier in knowledge of the Hebrew, he's a righteous man before God, it tells us, so he would know. So all of a sudden, in the 
Psalms and in the Old Testament. How many, you know, we often talk that the Old Testament leads us to Jesus Christ, right? You ever hear that? But do you hear all the words in here that brings you to that? So, in like, for example, I only wrote down two examples. Psalm 14, it says, On that salvation for Israel would come out of Zion. When the Lord restores the fortunes of his people, let Jacob rejoice and Israel be glad. Now, there, there's two nations, the north and the south, Jacob and Israel. But if you read this in the understanding of the word, it would say, oh, that Yeshua for Israel would come out of Zion. In other words, the name Jesus and salvation are interchangeable through the word Yeshua in Hebrew. So what Psalm 14 is saying, there will come a person named Yeshua, Jesus, who will save. Bring salvation. Or in Psalm 51 it says, Restore to me the joy of salvation or the joy of God. Yeshua. Bring salvation. And so here in this passage where where Joseph has this vision and he hears him say, Give him the name of Jesus because he will save his people from sins. I think Joseph could connect with that because of his teachings, of his understandings of the Hebrew word. See, a lot of people don't realize the disciples wouldn't have been going around calling what we call Jesus, Jesus. They would have been calling him Yeshua. That's what they would have called him, salvation. Salvation has come before you. When when Jesus says he has come before you in fulfilling the scripture... He is saying to the the Pharisees and the Sadducees who would know these words as well that salvation has come before you right now. And all this took place to fulfill what the Lord had said through the prophet. And the prophet, by the way, is the prophet Isaiah. The virgin will conceive and give birth to a son, and they will call him Emmanuel. This is the only place that Emmanuel is used, but it's, it's God with us. And so in these two passages of, of, of what we're hearing from the book of Matthew, it is saying that this baby, do you realize this baby is salvation? He is a gift from God so we might have hope. It is a gift from God that we might have peace and joy. But it's the biggest thing. It is a gift from God to show you how much God loves you. He brings you salvation in himself. And the virgin will conceive and give a birth to a son and they will call him Emmanuel. See, what Christmas is about is Emmanuel. When you hear this story, what's the, what's the thing that jumps out to you to be the, the strangest thing or the, or the weirdest thing or, or something that's hard to believe or comprehend? Is it that a virgin is, is pregnant? Is that the biggest thing? Or Joseph accepts it and, and goes forward with it? Or, or an angel or a vision happens in Joseph's dream? Is that the biggest aha or, or surprise that you can't? Oh, Heather, you're shaking your head no. What is the biggest surprise? That there is salvation. There's salvation. See, for me, when I read this, Heather, right on, I think the biggest thing that, that jumped out at me is that God would put on the flesh for me. God would suffer like I will never suffer to show me how much he loves me. God will offer us everything And I contributed nothing. God will give us forgiveness. Grace. He will give us everything we need. The strength to get through. The ability to to trust and to love even the unlovables. See, when he says he will call him Emmanuel, Emmanuel means God is with us. This passage in Matthew is saying that that God so loved us that that I'm even going to take a doubter, the one that already knows what he knows, and I'm going to change him to accept something impossible. How did that happen? See, 
the things that I learn in my life is usually when I let go of the things that I already know or I think I know. Things that I say, I can't do this. Anybody have been there? I can't do this. And if you let go of that, yeah, Jacob, amen, uh, Jake. If you let go of that and you start trusting and you start working towards something, all of a sudden you realize, you know what, I can do this. I remember when I was thinking of going back to school, and anybody that knew me well, my sister and stuff, while she did encourage me, they would know there's not a chance in heck it's going to happen. You know, I just wasn't a school person. And one of my deep, deep friends said, CB, if you don't go, that's failure. If you do go and you don't make it, that's not failure. That's trying. See, the biggest surprise to me is that God was with me. I know it the whole way through. He gave me what I needed to get through every class, the work, multiple jobs, the work within this church family for a while. When I let go that I can't do, you'll realize God can. I can't get sober. I can't possibly love this person. I can't possibly believe this could possibly happen. And yet what we find out is God's bigger than all our doubts. And he'll use those doubts for fertile soil because when it does happen in your life, hopefully you'll go out and proclaim and shout the good news. And so here comes the part for us again. It comes back to us. We've seen our faith and our trust that we need to trust in God's word. And then all of a sudden it says, when Joseph woke up, he did what the angel of the Lord had commanded him and took Mary home as his wife. And this is where I fail. There are many times that I hear the voice of the Lord and I say, well, you really don't know what I need. And I'll try to ignore it. Anybody ever tried to ignore that little harping? And then keeps pulling. Or he says, okay, go, go your own way. Go ahead, doubt. Go that way. And we always come back and say, so how did that work out? How'd that work out? Or I already think I know. I know what's best for this church. I know what's best for me. And so when people come with their opinions and stuff, I kind of block it out. I don't, hopefully I don't do that very often. But sometimes we know what we know. And it blocks out the possibilities that God's going to open a new door. You know, I, I, I think of Doug, Doug. And when he lost his job. And he so bad needed to know why. Right? What did I do wrong? Instead of asking the Lord, okay, so what's next? And when that question started coming up, God help us all, he came here. (laughs) See, God works in funny ways. But when we let God do the work in us, we will see the miracles. The miracle of a virgin being pregnant by the Holy Spirit. The miracle of a child being born and named salvation. The love of a a God that loves us so much that he'll go to the cross for us. That he took every possible suffering so we will know that we will never walk alone. Then it tells us he did not consummate their marriage until she gave birth to a son. And he did give him the name, Jesus Now, why do you think it's important that they did not consummate their marriage? So there'd be no questions. But see, I see it even stronger than that. I see it, but Linda, I agree 100% too. But I see, uh, you're, you're so welcome. I see that Joseph is paying the ultimate thank you to God. By being obedient without question. He had his doubts. 
They worked through those doubts. Then he was ready to take on the work. <laughs> there is a God. <laughs> and they named him Jesus. Folks, on Christmas Eve, we will come before us once again. And I just want you to think between now and then, what does salvation mean to you in your life? How has it changed your life? How do you need God to do some work in your life? In other words, what do you have to let go to let God do that work? What do you have to st stop thinking you know it all and realize there's only one that knows it all? And he wants to work with you. So as we come to that manger on Christmas Eve, and we see that child once again come into our manger scene. Don't look at it as just a little baby. Look at it as the creator and the giver of your salvation. Joseph is a bystander. He's really not that important in the big story. And I realize that's each and every one of us. But you can't tell me that he didn't play a significant role of teaching if we truly hear the word, that word, that name of Jesus. God is awesome. And he has given us his word so we might grow in faith. Even in our doubts, he'll work with us. Amen. Amen. And so... As we get ready for Christmas and we prepare our hearts, I think it's a good time for us just to come together in prayer and ask God to do just that, to start allowing, that, to help us clean out the places we need cleaned up. So let us be in the spirit of prayer. Gracious and holy God, Father, as we come before you on this snowy but beautiful day, we remember the story that Matthew tells us in his book. We remember the doubting of, of Joseph, the line of David, that the miracle that happens could not possibly take place. And yet, O oh Lord, when he hears your voice, when he hears the word, he changes. May that be what happens to us on this Christmas. May we hear the word as if for the first time. May we hear it as if it's speaking directly and only to us as individuals. And when we hear it, may we take root. May it take root. May we begin to use our hands and our feet. May we begin to, to put them to the test in many ways, to, to use the word to give us the strength and the courage. May we not fear because of what we know, but may we just rejoice knowing that you do know. Almighty God, I pray for those that need to make those changes in their life. I pray for those that are living in fear or in pain and, and just stuck there. I pray for those that are stuck in the, I can't do this. Give me time instead of, oh Lord, Lord, let's do it. Father, pick us up on this Advent season. Pick us up this Christmas and let us all just shout to the mountaintop that you are the king. You are salvation. And your name is above all things. Lord, I give you thanks and praise for the day we are blessed to have. I thank you for this incredible family I call home. I pray for our president and all elected officials. I pray for our, our boards in this church. I pray for all the volunteers and I pray for all churches worldwide that we can come to the understanding that we do have unity through your son Jesus Christ. And through Christ, as he showed, we can have unity with all people. Almighty God, we pray for our military troops that are stationed around the world. I pray that their hearts are open to accept your love. I pray this for all the first responders, for all the frontline workers. Oh, Lord, may our hearts be open to truly come to grasp that peace can be had even in the very toughest 
of circumstances. And Lord, I pray this for those that I may call my enemy, that they too can find a peace that surpasses all human understanding. And what a day it will be, O oh Lord, when we simply shake hands and sit side by side with our enemies. O oh Lord, with you all things are possible. May we continue to trust that you know more than we do. And may we walk in the footsteps of your son, Jesus Christ, proclaiming to the world that salvation has come through a child born in Bethlehem. Lord, I pray this and ask all these things in the name of your mighty son's name, Jesus. And through him, O oh Lord, we were taught a prayer that says, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Amen. If you join me in the last hymn, um, Rejoice, the Lord is King, hymn number 177, please. Please be seated. You know, the best way I know to have my heart lift up, well, there's a couple ways. One is certainly the love of family, the love of this church. But I know in those darkest moments, what lifts me up the most is reading the stories of Jesus Christ. Listening to the words, the familiar words, once again. And ask the Lord, so what are you saying to me today? Am I the doubter that God needs to use to bring that fertile soil? Am I the one that's ready to step out and, and do what the Lord is asking of me? Am I ready to believe the unbelievable? You know, what's your story going to be this Christmas? 
See, I can't answer that. But if you think about it and pray about it and talk with the Lord, you will get your answer of how is he ready to use you today. Salvation has come, and in him there is no end. Amen. May we all go in the love and the peace that our Lord offers us. May we celebrate with each other, showing each other compassion and love. Go in peace. Amen.